so this week it has been released that the unemployment figures have reached 2 million and it's the first time they've been that high since 1997 which um, I wasn't anywhere near looking for a job in 97 <laughs> so <laughs> I can't call it like that um, so yeah what do people think about that? I mean, obviously, like, with everything's going on with, like, the credit crunch and the recession and everything, I mean, it's just really knocking people left, right and centre, isn't it? I mean, I know people close to me have, um, have kind of fallen out of work lately and it's been really, really hard getting anything. I mean, short of kind of bar work. These people I know that have, you know, been working professionally since leaving university, like, a few years ago. And, um, and it's very, very hard at the moment. I mean, even bar work isn't the easiest thing to get these days because there's so much competition for jobs in general that there are loads of people who have got degrees, who have been in jobs that are all looking for work. And because they haven't been able to find work in their specific areas, they're trying to get things like bar work or other kind of jobs. So even that isn't an easy route to go down. Now, certainly if you're an untrained barman, if you've never worked behind the bar, before, I think nowadays you've got no chance of, uh, of getting into it because that market will be so so flooded. What I think is really frustrating for um, new graduates is, you know, I've filled out a wave of applications for all sorts and each one has come back without fail uh, due to the number of candidates with greater experience than you, we're not calling you to interview. And you find yourself thinking, well, how am I meant to get the experience if you're not going to give me the job in the first place? And that really, in today's economic climate, is just salt into the wound, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I mean, I know we've had a lot of um, interns through here at Catch 21, and a lot of them have been applying for kind of real jobs, and, and they've had to take on internship after internship after internship, often either expenses only or unpaid, or very, very minimal pay, just to kind of get anywhere they want to be. And, and this is like a year, two years after they graduated. Yeah. And, I mean, a lot of these people, you know, they're very kind of intelligent people, they know what they're talking about, but, you, you know, the, the, the fact that they have to work for free for two years before someone even pay them, pay them to do a job they've been doing already, yeah. I think it's absolutely ridiculous. That is a problem with internships, because also, because it, it's kind of, this kind of recession is affecting businesses as well, they obviously need the work done, but can't actually afford to pay people to do it. So more and more internships are coming about. And it's really kind of like a difficult place to be in when you know the work that you're doing deserves to be paid and could be paid for and you're not getting paid for it. It's pretty kind of gutting, really. And if you're doing it for such a long time, it can be really frustrating and you can't see like a way out of it. I mean, a sort of traditional route, I think, has been, you know, come out of uni, can't get a job, go back, do a postgrad and then hope that things are better than that. But, you know, now even that's not a guarantee. I have a friend doing a postgrad at Coventry Uni, a very specific one to do with the, the history of international terrorism. Now, there should be people queuing up to employ him when he's got a master's relating to international terrorism, but, you know, he's already thinking to himself, well, you know, I'm just going to be in the same position that John's in right now, I'm going to be in it a year later. It's, I mean, it's, it almost seems like people aren't valuing the education system, or they aren't valuing the products. Of it. As I say, it's just all is really demoralising for young people. Definitely, because I think you find that now there's less and less jobs going, it's the people with the experience, i.e. people that have been doing the job for kind of X amount of years who are getting what jobs are left. So anyone that's fairly new to whatever industry it is are really struggling because obviously it's all the old hands that are taking all the jobs uh, and leaving anyone sort of newly qualified or fresh out of uni, you know, just with, with nothing and then the, the danger there is that people get demoralised and they'll you know take a, a lesser job you know one that's not necessarily like in the industry they, that they want you know and and you know you know, in a few years time there's going to be a real lack of kind of low to mid level you know people you know, once once you know hopefully you know the economy starts turning around and employment will hopefully rise up again you know it's there's going to be less skilled people around because people that were sort of would normally jump on and learn the trade um, just won't have been given the opportunity to at all. And I mean also, if people start doing more masters and things like that, it's going to be the 
within a couple of years it's going to be like everyone has a master's. So what's it going to be like for those people who have chosen not to go to university, have gone through other routes to get things? If the bar is so high, like education-wise, that everyone has a master's, it's going to be really difficult for people to get jobs, I think, even longer into the future, if that's the way it's going to go. It is. Well, I read something today that claims the public sector is still recruiting, that you know the private sector is, is chopping jobs left, right and centre, but there's still plenty of jobs going in the public sector, and, they're, and a lot of them are getting pay rises. I've applied for significantly more public sector jobs than than private sector ones, but no one's, as I say, no one's employing me. I really like to know where these people are getting their figures from, because it's never struck me that there's been a particularly big public sector recruitment drive. Things that we've got to remember is when a lot of these figures are released, they quite often not you know lie, but they kind of dock them and they take only a certain. Mm sample just to make it look the way they want to to get the headlines they want you know or people can take the the figures and analyze them their own way to throw up and when you actually read a lot of the small print on these things that were actually only, you know, only a select number of people were surveyed or mm. it was taken from a highly skewed sample or so I mean you, I mean you really have to do the research yourself to figure out I mean you can't really rely on, on these numbers what that is it they much. say? Lies, damned lies and statistics. Yeah. yeah, you have to be really careful with statistics. I remember a couple of weeks ago they were talking about it because there's a national office for statistics and basically there was a bit of a conflict between the government and this office because the government weren't happy with the statistics that the office were kind of releasing and they were like, the office are supposed to be an independent organisation. So they were like, oh, we're, you know, releasing the proper statistics. So it's a bit of a dubious area, I'd say. Yes, well, of course, all this is going to hit the taxpayer quite hard, isn't it? Because if you've got two million people unemployed, and let's face it, the majority of them are going to pop down the job centre and get themselves onto job seekers' allowance, yeah, that's going to come straight out of the taxpayer. Ta if there's taxpayer less people around pocket. in, in yeah. work paying taxes, it means mm. it's all going to go up for everyone else. Exactly, yeah. It's... Yeah, I mean, I also heard that the government are trying to encourage or set up an internships program, an actual paid one, so people could get this these skills and experience, be paid quite a low amount, I'd imagine, but, you know, kind of be working in the area they want to be working in, which is yeah, a good thing. Yeah, I mean, if, if people can at least you know, get enough just to cover their rent and their food, just their basics, mm. I mean, that's got to be something, hasn't it? Yeah, well, particularly if you're a student and you've been used to living with no money anyway it's mm. it's not going to be an enormous shock to the system if you you know if you're getting just enough to to keep you vaguely solvent really is it um there certainly needs to be more of an effort to uh, to do that but maybe part of the the sort of thinking with with the politicians and, and the people offering these internships is they know there are plenty of people out there who will do it for free so why bother you know you, why not save the money? Just get them to do it for free. The thing is, they haven't got any other choice but to do it for free at the moment, have they? Because they can't actually get a job. Uh, so that's the thing, the cycle a... just keeps mm. going on, doesn't it? I think, yeah, a lot of people coming out of universities and going into the job market now really might have to uh, put their careers on hold for mm. a while and just weather out the recession. Yeah, I mean, apparently the figure's going to go up to, unemployment figure's going to go up to three million later this year, so. It doesn't look like it's looking up anytime soon. No. Yeah, looks like that promise I got on my first day of uni, having a degree will not guarantee you a job. That's come eerily true.